first you got to give me your name. You got to give me your full name, like, and then you got to tell me where you're from. Yeah, so I'm Aaron Ade Mittens um, from the south side of Chicago. Yeah, I'm specifically from, I was born on 87th and Hamilton, born and raised. Is that, is, that west, south. is that west or east of the Dan Ryan? Uh, that is west of the Dan Ryan. 87 mm-hmm. and Hamilton. All right, man. So like, you know, what was it like there, man? You grew up in a public school. You grew up in like a private school. Like, you know, like what, what, what was it like? Yeah, so I went to a local neighborhood school pretty close to where I am now. The typical story of uh, Chicago public schools, underfunded, overworked teachers, n- big class sizes, you know, the usual. And um, I was lucky enough to have a parent that kind of pushed me towards um, testing into another local school. Uh, so I was lucky enough, privileged enough to be in uh, um, Wicker Park uh, Pritzker and Pritzker Elementary. And then I went to um, Chicago Tech Academy High School. Uh, that was on like 14th and Ashland. So that was pretty a decent school in a rough area. So it was a good mix of both. So my life has always been pretty both sides of the railroad track, if you will. Yeah, yeah. 14th and Ashland. Man, was that your like first? That's the... Uh... Kind of close to uh, what's that UIC right there? Was that your first time like yeah, yeah. exploring? Because where you from? You said eighty seventh, man. That's you know oh, yeah. it's black over there. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So is that your first time like getting exposure to like something different when you went down to to Ashland? What thing? I guess in terms of racially, there are white people everywhere. So you're usually or you're usually gonna find them wherever you ha- when you have to you know go to the DMV you gotta go grocery shopping this that and the other. But it was the first time, yeah, where I would I would actually take the Ashland bus. Ashland is one of the longest streets in the city. I would take the Ashland all the way from where I was uh, 99th in Ashland to 18th in Ashland, what, what this high school we're talking about now. So that's like you really get to see firsthand the segregation of the city and how the whole color of the bus changes by the time you hit the 20s. Hey, that's funny. That's right. That's like the red line, man. You're at 90. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. like the whole thing changes. You get from one end of the other to, to the other end of the city. And so, I mean, you went to high school, you graduated high school, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and yeah. then college? I started college, I didn't finish it for financial reasons. Okay. I went to Tennessee State University. It was an HBCU. Uh, my dad went there, my older brother went there. Um, I didn't really want to go to college, so I guess I was going to go there. Um, and then, yeah, the financials happened how they happened, and then I dropped out. Yeah, what'd you major in? It was going to be psychology. Okay. What made you want to go on psychology about I wanted to do advertisement, but I didn't want to do like the usual course in advertisement. So I thought if I would go like human analysis and then pivot that into um advertising, thought that would be be cool. But um that's before I realized that pocketbook that <laughs> you need to finish it. But uh yeah. Yeah, I do that pocketbook, man. Money make the world go around. So like you come back, you come back, you know, home. And like, what, what happens next? Like you. Yeah. So I come back home and I start working at Amazon an Amazon fulfillment center, which is basically the go-to nowadays. Um, and I was doing that just to pay off the, the little debt that I had made at the time. And then that's where I met this girl, uh, Jasmine. She was a cool friend of mine and she actually introduced me to rework. She, um, we were cool friends. We mingled. She thought I would be cool for the program. She introduced me to it. Okay. And it was cool. a pretty straight shot into it. All right, yeah, it was like, man, it was at a time where it was like just getting this start, you know, we, we were figuring things out at the time too. And so like, man, you 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 get to rework and like, was it any adjustments that you had to make? Like, was it was it like a, did the light switch come on or was it like a like slow light switch? Like, what was it like when you first? So the instructors, instructors, I don't know how the instructors are now, but they were in current sales positions. I think they were um, account executives or um, BDMs, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, the, I guess the ramp up, I'm trying to think of how to say it in a way that would make sense. A lot of it you realize is lingo and the way in which you say things and the process of selling. So I guess that the general air of sales, I had kind of had that down pat. But then you realize there's a whole nother side to it that's kind of non-tangible, if that makes sense. And then learning all of those kind of nuances, was a, that was like the the last one percent, but it's really the ninety percent of it. If that makes sense. Mm, yeah, yeah. Hey, so, the, so, so, like coming in, you you knew what it kind of, you knew how to hustle. Sound like. I mean, don't most black people? I mean, when it really comes down to it, it's just about um, applying it in the right way, and um, in this society, and that's really how that's the parallel. Yeah. What was what would you say the biggest challenge is? I guess like so as you were going through that. So clearly, like you're learning something new. Like growth is painful sometimes and requires adjustment. Mm-hmm. Like, was there any adjustments that you had to like 
make I'm, I'm a lucky person yeah. so i'm a, i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a uh, privileged person even though i'm black i'm privileged so i i had a certain level of um of my parents you know pushing me to read all the time when i didn't feel like it pushing me to do stuff that wasn't my doing but i have the i can speak relatively well i'm relatively aware of you know the world and what's going on how things move how things connect that sort of thing so when it comes to like working in an office space and doing sales that final step of kind of like i guess for me personally the hardest thing was getting the getting the lingo down getting the the communication style down getting the all of that stuff which is kind of the last kind of those bricks that need to be laid yeah now you mentioned communication style you know i heard it twice right and oftentimes, like, and I've gone through like other nonprofit organizations, I've seen like other boot camps kind of, and when you think about communication style and kind of like authenticity around like being black, would you say it was like a communication style that was like, don't be yourself or like, what would you, how would you describe like the difference, I guess, in like, cause we all like, you know, I don't know people over at currency exchanges and the banks in black neighborhoods. It's like, would you say it's a, right. like, how would you describe the, the shift? Well, I would say authenticity is the, the number one thing and anybody can read through that. So if you're being authentic, being yourself, that's the best route to go into it. So we're talking about sales specifically, you know, if you're not being authentic, you're trying to force something, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to really work out for you. So if you're going to go that route, don't, doesn't really work out that way. But when you're trying to learn how to get into sales initially, learning the specific, the words, like for instance, we use different words for the same thing, right? learning the specific word to use. And if you use the other word, it's going to sound a little like, for instance, at the end of a sale, we are asking for the routing number, the accounting number, you're asking for the tax identification information. You don't want to say it to where it sounds fake, but you want to say it in a way to where that you're not threatening or you want to say it in a way to where it's, um, it comes off, you know, so it's finding that middle ground and you know, cold switching is a thing that is a reality and we all do it and it shouldn't be necessary, but um, success in some you know, fields require some adjustments and finding that middle ground of how to be yourself, but also adjust to your surroundings is always going to be a hard, you know, a hard fight there, but it's a middle ground somewhere. Yeah, big facts, big facts. And I got to ask you this, right? So man, before Rework, right, you was like doing the fulfillment center, like after Rework, did, did you make more money? Was Rework helpful and did you make more money because of it? Oh, for sure, yeah. And that, so it comes to, again, when you're getting into sales and even if you don't, finish with sales, you move forward with that. Learning those fundamental skills, like the communication style and that kind of stuff, that's going to carry you in any of these sort of spaces that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, that definitely at a fundamental level definitely helps me um, big time in how I interview for sales jobs and other jobs, how I approach certain positions, how I present myself, all that stuff. Yeah, solid, man, solid. So now we get to land this plane and uh, we're going to do two things, right? So the first thing, I did the first thing first, Right. And so if you was uh so you, you probably gonna use the first thing to do the second thing, right? So if you if you had to like go back and, and talk to like your younger self and like tell your younger self something, and I hate I usually hate this question, so I don't really want you to talk to your younger self because in most instances when I when I get asked this question, I'm like, I couldn't tell my younger self nothing. He wouldn't listen. Like he'd be like, I got it, right? But if you just had to spit game into like somebody that's like in a situation where you know, you were, when you got back from school, you was working at the fulfillment center, you was at a job. Did you like the, did you like your job at the fulfillment center? At, at the time, yeah, but zooming out, no. <laughs> I mean, it was cool, you know, when, when you're in it, but then you realize, am I going to want to do this for the rest of my life? And then what's the next? Obviously not, you know. Yeah. So if you could tell that person something, right, towards the back end mm -hmm. of the fulfillment center job where you like, it's cool, but you know you are, have the potential to do way more. Like, what would that message be like uh, to that person? I would say first find what makes you happy. I think that's key and that's important because a lot of times, like for instance, me in college, I didn't, I knew I didn't want to go before I went, but why did I go? My mom said I had to go. My dad said I had to go. Society said I had to go. So I spent all my time making everybody else happy. Then when I complete it, now they're happy and I'm sad. So you know, first find out what you want to do, what you want to make in your life, what you, what route you see for yourself and hit, hit that head first. Um, focus on whatever other people want for you or what other people think you should be doing. Obviously take the critique and listen to it and think critically about it. But at the end of the day, whatever makes you happy, go for that head first. Yeah, solid, solid, solid. 
So then to wrap this up, we're going to land this plane, right? So we got this uh, our logo, our, our, our motto at Rework is get this work. And the reason is get this work is because, like, man, it's going to require, no matter what you do, whatever side of the fence you own, like, growing, growth is going to require work. You know, like the tech companies that they like, oh, we want to be more diverse. You're like, all right, cool. That's going to require y'all to do some work, right? It requires work from everybody. True. And so, you know, we want you to end it with 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 the model. So we want you to just like, man, throw a commercial out there where it's just like, whatever you can, you can say whatever you want, but it got to end with get this work. If you want money, you got to get this work. You want success, you got to get this work. You want happiness, you got to get this work. Anything that's worth living for and worth liking, we we'll have to get this work. Solid, man. Money. Love it, dude. Man, that's good <laughs> stuff, man. Good stuff, good stuff. Appreciate Let it. Stop, man. Yeah, appreciate you for, man, taking the time.